Hey guys, Zekmarsh here, and over the past couple weeks I've been watching this one anime called The Promised Neverland, and I think you guys might enjoy it. It's actually kind of interesting. Um, I'm not going to do a review on it because I frankly just don't have the time to review it, but what essentially what the anime is, is it's about orphans in an orphanage, but that's not actually what it's about. So, the thing about this... The thing about orphanages is that when a kid leaves, they usually are getting adopted by families and live happy, fulfilling lives. But what happens in The Promised Neverland is a bit darker. So, during the first episode, we are introduced to a little girl named Connie. Don't, uh, don't get too attached to her. She's gone by the end of the first episode. So, what happens is Connie is an example of one of the kids getting adopted and throughout this entire thing the children are told never to leave and is that they can't go beyond the gate they can't go up beyond the wall they have to stay on the orphanage grounds that's what they've been told their whole life they're not allowed to do anything else and they also have to take tests every once in a while to try and get the best scores. And it's here where, and it's at this point where we meet our three main protagonists cycling around. Emma, a spunky little redheaded girl who's incredibly athletic, and Norman and Ray, who are both tied for being one of the smartest kids in the orphanage. So. Around this, so during the day, we're introduced to Connie, as I said, don't get too much attached to her, who, who is finally leaving the or orphanage to presumably start her own new life or something like that. So, yeah, this is, it's mainly what's going to go on next that's going to happen. So, Connie is about to go meet her new family, but what actually winds up happening, I'll get into a bit. Because Emma, Emma and Norman find out that she actually left her stuffed bunny behind and leave to give it to her before the gate is permanently closed. And then that's where the twist comes. So, as it turns out, the caretaker of these children, Isabel, is not a good person at all. In fact, if she were... In fact, as someone who works with children, I know for a fact that if that was her primary goal, she sucks at her job. Because, I mean, well, maybe. It's like her secondary goal, and she does it well, but that's not her primary goal. And that's where I'm going to get into it. So it turns out that Connie's dead. I told you. Don't get too attached to Connie. So yeah, it turns... and But that's only the first twist. The second twist that comes is when Connie is picked up by a bunch of demon things. I don't know, really know what they are. And Emma and Norman can only watch an abject horror from as they hide under the truck that Connie's body was stored in. As she is carted away in a preservation tank and taken to God knows where. And... Then the demons make a deal with Isabel to procure, procure some of the higher quality ones, which is what the scores mean. So, at this point, Emma and Norman, they run, but they leave the bunny hop behind. And it's at this point where Isabel knows that somebody who wasn't supposed to be there was there. And that's where the anime takes off. Because now... Emma, Norman, and Ray are trying to escape with all the children so that none of them get eaten by demons anymore. Which is going to be a challenge in itself because beyond the little fence that they're told never to go past, past is the past is a giant ass concrete wall that they can't climb over. So yeah, right off the bat they're already at a disadvantage, and the disadvantage gets even worse because not because almost immediately after. In the second episode, our old pal Isabel brings in two newcomers. First, she brings in a little girl named Emma, 
well, not Emma, but a different little girl named Forget. But anyway, she she brings in a little newborn who the children now have to smuggle over the wall as well. And they also bring she also brings in this large black woman named Sister Crone who, yeah, and I'm not being racist. She's literally this big hulking black woman. Um, I'm I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, and she is as freaky as I am describing her. Because she has her own hidden agenda to try and get Isabel fired so that she can become mom of the orphanage. But she's not having any luck because not only are the children basically avoiding her like the plague whenever she brings up their plan to escape the wall and dodging the question, but she's also one step behind Isabel the entire time who knows pretty much everything that goes on in the orphanage. And this anime will turn you vegan. I'm not kidding. No, it's like, okay, so I should explain this. Yeah, obviously the, the children are getting eat, eaten here, and that's bad. Don't eat children, or really anybody for that matter. But it's kind of a little bit different from, like, eating a hamburger or something. Because, I mean, yeah, on the one hand, eating a living thing, regardless of whether you can have a sentient conversation or not with it, is kind of bad. But on the other hand... Cow is kind of raised to be eaten. I mean, it's kind. Of, it, I know it's a little complicated, and I probably have no idea what I'm talking about. And obviously, and obviously, you shouldn't eat children. And that's where the anime kind of takes it a step too far-ish, because they she they explain in the anime that the children are being raised to be eaten, which is wrong. You shouldn't do that. Don't raise children to be eaten by demons, kids. But the thing about this is that I. I kind of do, un I understand that it was done as like a commentary of like veganism and all that. I understand that's what the story is supposed to be about. But, to be honest, I'm not going to give up meat because I watched this, but I am going to be a little bit hesitant toward eating the t meat. I'm like, I'm going to make sure, like, I'm not going to stop eating meat, but I'm going to make sure that it's actually the meat that it says on the box so yeah maybe don't so yeah just uh check to see what kind of meat it is that's that's what that's the what i'm trying to say but yeah the the anime is good because they're trying to figure out how to get over the wall with all the children including the newborn that just showed up i forget what her name is it's i don't know but the thing about the anime but the thing about the anime is that it's definitely it's that, it's that you don't, is that when it first starts, it seems like it's going to be about these children in the orphanage, but, but then you see the OP and it's like, that doesn't really match the tone of the show, like, at all, so what's going on? So that's your, that should be your first red flag. When the OP, when the OP doesn't match the tune of the show, you should probably know that something's up, but yeah. It's definitely going to be a little bit interesting to see how these children escape. And definitely, if Emma were like a real little girl, I would just adopt her on the spot. Because she's just that kind of little girl that I just love. And I would like love to have a child like her. But unfortunately, I live in New Jersey, so there's an age requirement for that. And she's like, I don't know, like nine years behind my age. And there's a legal requirement in New Jersey here that says you have to be at least ten years apart and I get why because they don't want like pedophilia or any of that and they want to make sure there's a definite age gap so that it's not like really really creepy and that you're not just adopting a child just to have sex with her or him so I get why they did that and I get why they do that in New Jersey so I mean kind of a little tangent because I did look up how adoption works um you just need to be you just I mean, the age requirement will differ depending on what state you're in, but yeah, that's basically it. That, but that's just a little tension on adoption, and because I it was relevant, so I thought I'd bring it up. But anyway, yeah, there's anime is good because it just shows. Because I think I think one of my favorite scenes is where they realize that Connie is actually being sold to be eaten, and and the and the look of sheer terror on. Norman and Emma's face as they realize this is just gut-wrenching because you because they realize shit we're next <laughs> and 
and yeah, it's definitely going going to be an interesting anime. And it's also gotten, it's also going to be a little bit more challenging because they do have a spy, that's one of the children, and the, one of the children are spying on them and telling ev everybody their plans. So. There's no way they can escape as long as the spy is active. I won't spoil who it is because it's revealed in episode 4. But it's not somebody you would expect it to be. I'm going to say that right now. Or maybe you will expect it. Because if you watch the show, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah. That, I think you guys should watch The Promised Neverland. It's an interesting show and I think you guys would enjoy it. But yeah, that's just my two cents on this show. And I think you guys would like watching it. Because it's definitely interesting. And I definitely see a lot of you enjoying it. So, yeah, if you guys are going to see The Promised Neverland after me talking about it for, like, I don't know, a couple minutes or so, then what are, you, what are your thoughts about it if you have seen it? And if you're planning to see it, let me know why you're planning to see it now. So, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you didn't enjoy this little breakdown of The Promised Neverland and want to see more videos like this, then be sure to like the video because that's how I know when people want to see more of this. But yeah, I'm definitely going to continue watching the show. I'm going to continue following it. I may do an update video on the show if it goes downhill, which I doubt it will. But considering that Darling and the Franks did a complete 180 from how it was at the beginning to how it is now toward the end, like five episodes, it might happen, because Darling of the Franks was a good show, and I'm kind of sad that it kind of ended the way it did. So, we'll see, but, yeah, if you guys did see this show, then what do you guys think? Let's get a discussion going in the comments section down below, and in, over on my Discord server, link in the description. Either way, just thank you guys so much for watching. If you didn't indeed enjoy watching this, then be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And also follow me on Facebook and on Twitter in the description below if you haven't done so also either. So, yeah, if you guys definitely are going to enjoy the show, then go watch it. But either way, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!